Working on a collection where the loss of children is so present in the collection, it's painful because as a parent, the idea that you'll never see your child again is, is very heart-rendering. My name is Susie Snyder and I'm a curator at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Leon Marikus was a Polish Jew who immigrated to the United States in 1938. Leon was born in 1905 and he lived in Lwów, Poland, which is now a part of Ukraine. He was married and he had two children who were born in 1930 and 1935. He left them behind in the hopes that when he was in the United States, he would be able to secure their release and bring them over. From pretty much the moment that he arrived in the United States, he petitioned to have them come to the United States and join him. He's writing to the United States embassies, to consulates. He's reaching out to anyone or anything that he feels can help him. He received information that was, well, there's nothing else we can do. The European situation prohibits us from really finding anything out or moving your family. It's clear that the red tape is heavy. Starting in 45, 46, he goes to the International Tracing Service, the Red Cross, to Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. He's reaching out to anyone that could help him locate his family. There's rumors that they're in Bergen-Belsen Displaced Persons Camp, that um, they didn't survive. It's frustrating to read the letters because it's clear that there is just no information. He gets very specific information from one of their former neighbors and acquaintance in Lvov that his younger daughter Pola is alive, that there have been people who've seen Pola, yet he just can't connect with her, he can't contact her. And the Cold War is part of this problem because it's just very difficult to get any information. At one point he receives information from a cousin named Feld, and Feld is basically extorting him for information. So here is a man who's essentially lost his wife and family, and he's being extorted by his own cousin for money in exchange for information on whether or not Pola's alive. As late as 1950, he is still writing. There is still information going back and forth. Although Leon never actually had written evidence of the fates of his older daughter and his wife, he was informed that they most likely were deported to Auschwitz where they perished. His younger daughter, Pola, is likely placed in hiding with non-Jewish people in Lvov, but Leon can't confirm that either. Leon Marikus actually went to the extent of placing ads for any information on his daughter, Pola, yet he really received nothing. Leon never located his daughter. He ended up remarrying. He had a son who actually donated the collection to us a few years ago. The idea that you have a child that could be alive and yet you can't get to her, you can't find her. After the war, she couldn't state, I'm really Pola. It, it's very difficult for me to even fathom that she is living a life and she doesn't know that she was once a Jewish child, that she had other family, parents. It's very hard to fathom.